uh, and YouTube and all these different medias, I think society is fragmented into hundreds of different segments. Yeah, and now how, how does that impact design? Well, I think that, uh, like I mentioned before, it has a lot to do with age. Uh, I think that uh, people of a certain age don't want the dark, dark colors. And you tend to not want what your parents had. Yeah. You tend not to want what you've already had. Let's say you had a white kitchen. Well, that's the last thing you want is white again. You want to go right. darker. Or if you had a dark kitchen, you want to go lighter. So you want to feel like you've made a pretty big change mm -hmm. uh, because you want to notice that you've done something, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah people yeah. tend to go opposite of what they've grown in uh, this whole uh, urban, like urban thing. Uh, people that are very urban uh, downtown, they want the high tech, they want the sleek, the contemporary. That's the last thing they want is traditional. I know. Just west of Georgia Tech and west of where uh, Atlantic Station is, that's all being redeveloped. Because yeah. it was old, decrepit, industrial yeah. warehouse, warehouse, and now all that's being redone. So that's going to be the new in-town renaissance, is that near west side, just west of uh, Atlantic Station. We draw from Buckhead, we draw from Vining, Smyrna, Mableton, and then south towards Cascade Road, from million dollar neighborhoods, and uh, tr old traditional, um, and then young upscale urban professionals were. So we really kind of are in the middle of a, a real yeah. diverse uh, demographic. The, our market is 95% traditional because most of the neighborhoods are traditional neighborhoods established. Um, and then the houses are traditional. And yeah. you don't want to put a high-tech contemporary in a traditional kind of house. It just, it's like uh, out of character. Yeah. Uh, let's say you had an old uh, Grant Park house. To put a real high-tech contemporary kitchen in a Grant Park house is, to me, out of character. You want to try to do something in the flavor and the character and the age of the house. Mm -hmm. So uh, something appropriate for the house but that's my own opinion. What is your uh, ideal? First of all, okay. uh, you want them to be glad to see you, that, that someone told them about you, that you had done their kitchen, or you had a friend that we did their kitchen, and that helps a lot. And you want to put them at ease and um, get them to relax a little bit. And so uh, you kind of start off slow and ask them a few questions like, uh, well, tell me about the look that you're trying to get. Uh, tell me about the color first and get them talking and uh, get them to open up and feel like they can tell you whatever they want. And then just shut up and listen. And, uh, and then once you get in, if they brought a little scrapbook with pictures that they've clipped out and they can show you rather than tell you, then that helps me a lot, so that helps move the process along. But if they don't have a scrapbook or pictures, then you kind of show them the showroom and, and the merchandisers that have all the door styles and the samples and the colors. And you try to, I guess, start, well, or you want to go light, dark, mid-tone. I think the color is what, like I said, uh, people struggle with the most. And once they land on the color, then selecting the door style is pretty easy. Either they like it or they don't. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and they'll say, well, I want simple, clean lines, or I want something more ornate, or I want the little braiding borders. And yeah. they, they can be a little more specific about that. And once you get those two things out of the way, um, then... I, in, this, in sort of a roundabout way, um, you want to ask them about their budget. You know, I would First, I would say, uh, well, we've got several different lines here. We've got a stock line called Aristocraft, and uh, that's your best price and your quickest lead time. Then we have a semi-custom, which is uh, a three-week lead time, but you get more choices of door styles and colors and options. And, the, and what the, is that brand? A uh, Diamond. Diamond. 
and then if you want to go higher end, uh, as you go up in price, you get more choices and door styles and colors and options and modifications, customization. So um, depending on how much you want to customize it, that sort of tells me where you want to be. Um, and then you want a sense of what their budget is. Uh, ask them, is, is you trying to do this on a budget? Or, do you, or is this something uh, you're going to stay and live with for years and years and you're never going to move out of the house and mm -hmm. this is going to be the last major remodeling project? Mm -hmm. So long term uh, versus short term, is it a rental? Is this for a quick sale? Uh, is this for me, grandma, or in-law in suite? Uh, you know, yeah. ask those questions. And that kind of helps direct me to, well, this is what I want to show you. And once I have a sense of uh, their budget, whether it's low, medium, or high, then that's kind of where I start my present. I ask them questions also about the appliances that they want to use, because I need to know that in order to know how to design it. Yeah. So is it a cooktop and wall ovens, or is it a range, what kind of hood, uh, microwaves, these kind of uh, questions. Uh, and very often the people that come to see me, they've been thinking about this for a while, and they know that they want a commercial range. And it's going to be uh, like a 36 or a 48, or they've got this commercial hood picked out, and they've got their appliances picked out. So they've, they've done some legwork and some groundwork because they know. So, um, if when they give me the appliance information, um, I say, well, uh, all I need to do is get some measurements of the kitchen. If you have those, I can do a takeoff on some measurements that you provided. Have you had anybody come out to measure? Cabinet industry copies itself. Uh, different companies, they copy the same doors, the same color schemes, accessories, uh, hinges, slide mechanisms for the drawer. So. There's not a lot of difference from company to company co company. There's uh, minor differences, but they're all pretty much copying each other to keep up with each other. Because when one does something, everybody else has to do the same thing and catch up. Wow. So they're kind of always oh ratcheting gosh. up uh, the quality and are ratcheting up the features and um, um, all that stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, it's one of the few things that's still made here in America, it's localized. Yeah. And also, um, there's cabinet companies all over the country, but people really want to deal with something a little more local, uh, something made in Georgia or North Carolina or Alabama. They're not going to buy something from Washington State. So you want to be able to deal with someone not too far away, so they can get it mm -hmm. to you quickly. Um, Do you have relationships with the manufacturers? Oh yeah. Do you know them? Oh yeah. I talk to the customer service people all the time, and then our rep, uh, he's great in uh, keeping us up to date with all the changes, and because there's continuous changes in the yeah. industry, they're deleting this, they're eliminating that, they're adding this, and there's yeah. uh, you just have to take these people to task, uh, the customer service people, and they're really, they know their jobs, and if you can't find the answer in the spec book, you can call up the plant and talk to one of the gals up there, and they can help you out and answer the question. So I work pretty close to them if I get stumped on something. Uh, they've got a catalyzed conversion varnish, which is a high-tech kind of varnish and finish that all these uh, factory-built cabinets put on their products, and uh, you could put nail polish remover on there, and it wouldn't affect the finish. Wow. And it's, it's so hard and durable that the only way to get it off is to sand it off. Wow. But the local cabinet shops, the Bubba Built, I call it, uh, the, the local boys, they use a lacquered finish. They don't have the high-tech finishing uh, processes. And you can always tell a Bubba Built cabinet because eventually you'll see black gooey marks around the handles and knobs where yeah. the finish is breaking down. That's the lacquer breaking down because we have acid in our hands and when we handle things the acid works on that lacquer and it starts breaking down and getting black and gummy and then the grease in the air will work on that and if you wash them off with uh, 
a Windex or any kind of uh, household cleaner, that's going to strip it as well.